Hey, what's up guys? Troy here with WakeNetwork.com. Chilling out here in Palos Verdes, Southern California. Absolutely beautiful location. Take it all in from every angle. They actually supposedly filmed a bunch of scenes from the Pirates of the Caribbean movies along this, uh, this coastline through here. So pretty badass location. Thought you guys would enjoy it. And uh, I want to dive right into how to build muscle fast once you've hit a plateau. And this is something that I've personally experienced at a few different times in my life. So I want to uh, you know, really dive right in and tell you guys what's worked for me and what's uh, you know, helped me burst through these plateaus because you guys want those gains, man. You want, you want to keep on gaining muscle mass. You want to keep on increasing your strength levels as high as you can go. I know that when you hit a plateau, you lose motivation, you stop getting excited about going to the gym. And when you're not excited about going to the gym, it's just, it's not fun anymore. So I wanna keep you guys excited. So these are little things that I've done to burst through a plateau. I recently hit a plateau, I'd say like six to eight months ago. And uh, a lot of the tips from this video are actually things that I just kinda like came up with on my own to uh, get through the plateau. And I actually increased my bench press by like 50 pounds. I've actually, now I'm like the strongest I've ever been. And I was able to burst through the plateau. So let me dive right in and teach you guys how to do the exact same thing. So first and foremost, the single most important aspect to getting through a plateau where you just ramp up your muscle building and your strength gains again is to go in the gym for one month and uh, do not repeat the same workout at all. I'm talking about literally the exercises and the rest periods and just the whole workout. Go in the gym for one month and do not do the same thing ever two times in a row. So you can do this in a lot of really creative ways. You can do, uh, you know, you have your supersets, you have your drop sets, you have your pre-fatigue, your reverse negatives. Get really creative with uh, just coming up with different strategies that are gonna help you guys build muscle help you guys pack on strength. So one thing that I started doing, I was stuck on my bench press for like a year. I was just not bench pressing any more weight. I, I was going to the gym and I was doing the same routine over and over again. And I was just pretty much, I'd you know, load up 185, do a little warm up set, and then I'd throw on two plates. And it was almost like every single workout, I was just seeing how many times I could do 225. And I noticed I was not getting any stronger. I was pretty much staying at the same for a really extended period of time. So. What I did is I was just like, screw it. I'm going to completely change it up. So I started doing really heavy reverse negative sets where you're going down really slow and you have someone actually press down and try to resist them. I was doing <clears throat> you know, heavy reverse negative sets focusing on the eccentric portion of the set when you're going down slow. And this actually elongates the muscle mass and helps you get stronger. So I started focusing on that. I started doing really crazy drop sets where I would do like four drop sets in a row. I did one where it was like, 275, 245, 225, and uh, like 185. Some like really, really hardcore drop sets. And like, yeah, it was super challenging, but I started getting strong like instantly. I started just feeling like a beast. And I literally was increasing my bench like five to 10 pounds every single week. And I started doing this with everything. Now, a lot of you beginner weightlifters, I definitely don't recommend doing like drop sets and supersets on like the squat and the deadlift and exercises like that, but with things, you know, like the bench press, it's a lot easier. <clears throat> and um, a lot of the upper body exercises, it's a lot easier to do this. So get really creative. Um, do pre-fatigue sets. Maybe you do like a bunch of pec fly before you hit the bench press. Maybe you do, you know, leg extension to, uh, you know, fatigue our, qu our quads and then you do squats and leg presses. So just get really creative. Challenge what you know. Do different kind of workouts than you've ever done before. So cannot recommend that enough. Second tip that I started doing is I just started challenging like all the basics. Now I'm not saying um, don't take people's advice. You know, obviously I'm giving you guys advice right now. I'm not saying completely ignore that, but it's important to um, challenge what you know sometimes in a sense that I started doing things that you would never ever read about or you would never, you know, people would never give you this advice to get stronger, but it, it worked for me. I can promise you, like I gained 50 pounds on almost every single compound exercise by doing this. I started working out like a muscle group and a compound exercise movement that did the same muscle group 
like two days in a row because I was doing these compound exercises with like three to four days in between and uh, I wasn't getting stronger. So I was like, what's the worst that can happen? You know, I've really never seriously hurt myself. I've been working out a long time. So I did, for instance, one day, it was a Monday, I did really heavy bench press. The next day on a Tuesday, I did really heavy uh, decline and incline bench. I think I threw in some dumbbell and then I wouldn't do chest again for like three or four days. So I don't know like what it was and I'm not saying this is gonna work for you. I'm just telling you guys what's worked for me. I'm a naturally skinny guy just like you. But if you've been in the gym for a long time, I mean, you wanna shock the muscle in different ways. So by working out a muscle group two days in a row, I actually had a lot of success with it. I really could care less about the, co the negative comments I may get on this. It's just, um, if it worked for me, who's to say that you know it's bad or it's not gonna help you? So try it out. Um, just make sure you guys, if you're really sore, never work out a muscle group. I'm at the point where I train really hard and I don't really get sore. So, you know, I went really hard on like, I did like five, six sets. I think I did some like drop sets and some like really hardcore stuff on the flat bench. And then I went right into the next day, you know, just like four heavy sets of incline and decline bench. And uh, it worked really good for me. I did the same thing with barbell row for like my arms and my back. I would do one day where I'd do like, you know, five real heavy sets of barbell row this way. And then the next day I would do like some T-bar row and I would do some like underhand grip barbell row. And then I'd rest that muscle group for three, four days. So don't be afraid to challenge what you know, guys, you know, like, I've always kind of been a little bit stubborn. I've always liked to like, you know, challenge authority, so to speak. And I'm not saying that's a good or bad way to be, but it's given me some really, really good results and I've hit a plateau. So come up with some really cool stuff. Let me know uh, the best and creative workouts that you guys can come up with that'll help you guys burst through your personal plateaus. And make sure you let me know in the comments because I'm always willing to learn from other people and I'm always willing to try new things. So let me know what you guys come up with. And uh, last but not least, this is kind of like the X factor to your personal motivation is one thing that I notice is really powerful is to pick a training partner that's stronger than you or who has a physique that you're you know, aspiring to achieve. So, I mean, just like for me personally, like I, I've never got the chance to like work out with like some of the people that I look up to, but I know that if I worked out with like like Lazar Angelov, like I would probably have the craziest, most high intensity workout of my life because I would just be so amped up because, you know, I'm training with someone who's like at the level that I wanna be at. It's almost like, you know, if you're in sports, they say the quickest way to improve in a sport is to play with people better than you. And it's the same thing with working out. You wanna work out with people who are stronger than you. Don't pick the friend who's, you know, really weak and feeds your ego because you can bench press 100 more pounds with him. You know. Pick the friend and you know almost like find like a fitness mentor like a, a little workout partner that's a mentor and you know just see like hey man like you know you got a great physique blah 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 however you want to do it <laughs> that sounds a little weird but <laughs> however you want to go about it just see if you can work out with them one day just be like you know i'm really into this i'm not getting stronger i want to see what you're doing i want to i want to push myself outside my comfort zone and i want to learn from you so you know go about that find a good workout partner. Another thing that I do is I switch up my gym all the time. Now I have the advantage of living in Los Angeles. So you know, I go to 24 hour fitness and I have the advantage of going to all these different locations because you know, you're a member of one. So you, you know, you have access to all these different locations, but I do notice that, you know, if I go to the same gym for too long, you, you kind of like, you get in the same routine, you, uh, you know, you start chatting with the same people every day. So I just noticed that when I go to different gyms, on any given week, I might go to like three or four different gyms. Well, that's a little extreme, and if you guys live in, you know, small cities, you might not have that advantage, but you can still maybe one day go, if it's a nice day, you could do like a body weight workout outdoors. You just always change up the gym, always change up uh, the location to simulate motivation. And another thing that's really helped me is um, find like a really good online fitness mentor, and whether it be me, whether it be someone else, like I can personally tell you that I have learned so much from like Greg Plitt and GregPlitt.com and like all his awesome members area videos. And there's so many really, really good, uh, you know, fitness mentors out there. So pick someone who's going to motivate you. Everyone has their own style. Everyone, you know, everyone responds differently to, you know, different forms of motivation. So pick someone who you can learn from, someone that you respect, someone who's someone who has a physique that you aspire to have. You know, it's no sense, you know, 
picking Ronnie Coleman as your fitness mentor because the dude has like freakish genetics. Like I could literally work out and eat perfect for the rest of my life and I will never look close to him. But that's why I say pick someone who has a physique that you aspire to look like. So that's it guys, those are three things that have helped me tremendously. First through my personal plateaus and I know they're gonna help you guys get really strong blast through those plateaus, keep those gains coming, get you guys shredded for beach season and bulking season and every kind of weightlifting season in the future. So that's it guys. If you guys are looking for more great tips on how to bulk up and gain lean muscle mass, check out weightgainmethod.com. Thanks guys. I hope this can kind of uh, open up your eyes and spark some creativity on different foods that you can implement into your diet to gain muscle. Uh, they all serve a little bit of different purpose. Uh, one of these foods on the list, I guarantee you, is going to surprise you guys a lot. You guys are going to think I'm crazy, but...